Hey there, everybody. Thanks for watching again. I'm excited about what we have today. And so I decided to call this Let's Make a Monster because it's one of my favorite things to do. I think that my, uh, my, what is, what is the right word I'm looking for? My happy place is just the process of creating something from imagination. And so this is how I learned to draw and paint. And so I'm going to get started right away. We're going to design the, the monster that you saw in the thumbnail. I did that real quick before uh, we before we fired up the show. Now nah, we don't we don't need to show. We'll paint again. I got Brian in the room and I got Ben on the line helping me. You guys can say hello. Make sure we got good. What's up, everybody? All right. We out there in Orlando. And very good. Lubbock, very good. Yeah. Gives me a chance to get the audio right. You know, we got to make sure that you guys can hear yeah. everybody good. <laughs> Everybody out there today. All right. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to work with acrylics in tubes. And so I think I might be a little, I'm going to take one second here and uh, turn down my microphone just a touch because I'm a little bit hot and I don't want to damage things here. You know, what happened was I went over and, and, turned the, the wrong microphone down. I was like, oh man, we got to get a little more volume on Ben and I did it to myself instead. Okay, we're ready. This is what we're gonna do. We've got tubes here instead of the usual cans of paint. And so, uh, you know, many of you are very familiar with my style of painting that I like to work out of cans like these guys here. And so you'll see me you know, all the time just dipping into these because I'm a mural painter. And so I'll just say right away that I teach my trade. I don't just teach, I still do it. And I just, I recently changed the tagline for that reason because I was like, hey, you know what? This is why I know that I'm offering something good because I'm teaching you something that I am still doing for a living. And it's just been a thrill for me to continue to share it. You know, it's not, I didn't just start teaching because the career doesn't, doesn't work as well. It actually is a great life. I've enjoyed it very much. And I've got a friend, Morgan, Morgan Mural Studios. You can look that up online. This is how I think right here. And she would tell you the same thing. Morgan would say the same thing. She wrote it very well in a book that she made, the Muralist Handbook. Okay. So what we're going to do is create with acrylics, and these are completely intermixable. The can you saw and the tube, they're water-based acrylic paint. They're completely intermixable. Now, if any of you have any comments along the way, Ben is out there looking out for you. He's going to be making sure that anything important doesn't get overlooked. That's right, everybody. I'm keeping my eyes on you. So any questions, any things that come to mind, if, uh, you know, you want to talk about Joe's hair, Joe's painting, or uh, anything you're working on, let us know. Thinking. I'm thinking. A few of you are like, what is this? Is this a joke? I realized that, you know, it leaves tracers in my vision when I do this. And this is how I think with my brush. So I am just reproducing what I already planned to do but i'm gonna i do it a little different each time because the fun of the creative process you know just let's have uh let's let's have you scoot your uh, head a little bit out of the way well, there, it Joe. is big it is big okay that might be you know. why <laughs> thanks go buddy yeah thanks a lot brother man we need that kind of uh quality control we definitely do that's right <laughs> i mean i like the back of your head i really like it the back good. of your head man don't give so me <laughs> So many videos of uh, my messed up hair. I got that Dennis the Menace hairdo, you know. Uh, I'm not proud of it. Not proud of my hair. I'm proud of my proud of my family, though. Okay. So this is the top. You know, I'm making a nice big on on the topic of heads. That's funny. We're talking big head. I'm drawing a big head. Because this is something I've been asked a lot about, and I thought, oh, it'd be cool to demonstrate how to make something look really big. How do you draw a big thing in perspective on a small canvas, you know? So I've got the nose of my creature right there, and I'm really thinking about size. I want 
I want a, you know, a scary, angry eye right here. I think I'm gonna bring the nose down a little bit because I, I liked the look of the nose hole. So this is the front of the nose and then that's the nose holes. And then we're gonna go like this, bring that jawline down a little bit. It's gonna look like nonsense at first, but I know how to decipher <laughs> the code. Okay, this is the neck going back. Oh, this is gonna be kind of fun. It's, it is as if the, it's, it's kind of like turning, you know, when things turn their head up to howl or to give a big roar. I like that posture. Look at that neck goes down. This is what I loved about, you know, there's such expression, such emotion in, in creatures. You know, have you ever noticed that positioning hands in a particular way has a big effect on your work? You know, I get asked a lot about hands. And that's because there is emotional value in posture and, and just, just the way something holds itself, animals and people, or anything we relate to for that matter. So, you know, I've got this dip and I, I'm kind of imagining this thing, you know, it's letting out some kind of a scary growl. So I need to, to remember this rule that... Uh, you know, there, there's this, you know, I don't want to get too fancy with the description, but there's this inverse ratio that when something is twice as far, it's half the size. And so if I want this head, I, this is a huge, I want it to look like a big creature, not a little one. So I have to be sure there's a visible change of size between the head and the tail. It's not like I'm measuring, but just my judgment. It's going to be really significant if this head is 20 times closer, which it very well may be. Maybe I'm right up here on the, on the head of this creature. And then the tail, let's say it's the tail is like 100 feet away. Well, that is many times the distance of the head. So I can't make it real big and winding around everywhere without flattening the picture. So less is literally more. You know, I get a bigger creature by shrinking what I'm actually painting back. You know, according, according to Carol, you get a potato with roots by uh, <laughs> painting this way. It is a potato with roots. I like that. <laughs> and then also uh, Mary's wondering uh, if she has permission to try and paint this. So she oh, can learn. I would love that. I would love that. So here's the colors. I'm going to, if you want to know the colors I'm working with, I've got black and I've got, uh, here, I'll hold them up. I'll just hold them up here where you can see, Brian, you don't have to bother moving the camera for us. I've got uh, just any kind of black, and then I'm going to be using yellow to turn it green, and then I'm using uh, pure white and a magenta, just four colors. So anything on the purpley pink, you know, it's magenta. It's like uh, pomegranate and yellow, white, and black. That's my four colors. These are these are the most fantastic colors I've found to paint very organic color schemes with. You know, I don't get bright blues or super brilliant greens, but I don't see those often in nature. I mean, they're there, they're there, but I don't see them a lot. And yeah, we've so, got like a Rorschach test going on right now, you know, with this just black and white splatter thing. You know, some people are like, oh, you know, there's the potato, but then it's kind of like somebody's <laughs> tripping with their hair blowing in the wind. Yeah. And, all right, you know, good. Like, you know, all kinds of stuff going on in here. So I'm going to mess with the angle of the tail a little bit. Now, this is going to be kind of funny. You might think I'm painting a bunny rabbit tail here. This is actually a giant tail going off into the distance. So we got to make it real tiny here. It's going to come over this way. And right around here is the body of my creature. Everything I draw or paint, I'm always thinking of the parts. It's all parts. And so... Uh, I think that repetition has really allowed me to to uh, wrap my head around, you know, to me, to me, I don't blame you for just seeing messy black lines, but because these are the black lines I chose, they, they represent my short term memory of the three dimensional image I'm trying to make. And, and, and I feel like your mind is, is a muscle that can really grow as you learn different if, as you have multiple successes, I really love something that Ben said uh, when we were hanging what? out. What? That yeah. never happens. Oh. <laughs> well, on camera, we can be closer than we really are. <laughs> we can pretend like we're best yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I think you can do it for the ratings. So, uh, no, you really said something that I thought was cool. 
you you articulated something that I've thought of and and not articulated that well. Why a long trip becomes short? Share share with us. Mm. Do tell. Do tell. Yeah, I well, like, I, I like yeah, the way you, know, you said it better than when I would. Yeah. Well, now that the spotlight is uh, firmly on me, and yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have to disappoint. Let me see if I can muster up some eloquence for you. Yeah. No, you know, we, we were talking about, you know, uh, between Arizona and California, I make that drive a lot and it can seem grueling. You know, it's like a eight hour stretch, but it is only hard if you are focused on I have to get all the way over there and I'm not there yet. And so you spend the entire eight hours in anxiety, like trying to get there, trying to get there. But if you think to yourself, now nah, I'm just going to hop and skip over to this next town. It's an hour over there. And then I'm going to jump over this pond over to that next thing. And, you know, you subdivide it into these, these just little maneuvers. And each one is its own little uh, journey of its own. And then in the end, at the end of the day, the time has passed anyways. You're not trying to make time go faster. Yeah. Start. And there you are at your destination. You know, that's it. I, I thought that was so cool. You know, you, you, you uh, comprehend. And so what came to me, you know, I was thinking about that. The word comprehending. You, know, you comprehend the entire trip. It's not just a mystery of w uncomfortable waiting. And so uh, I think that designing something is similar uh, to that for me. I have all of these successes. So in, in the analogy of the road trip, think of successes as that next pit stop that you're familiar with. And so I have all these successes. I've drawn a neck before. I've drawn a jawbone before. I've drawn teeth. I haven't drawn them in yet on this. Uh, I've drawn all these things before. And so a, a scribble triggers a memory. And for me, this gives me a, a real vivid image of a memory of a 3D object that I've had success painting. I th and I think my mind has just developed like a muscle to really see all sides of the object that I just painted. And it makes it easier for me to come in here and say, the eye will look good here because on the three dimensional form, you know, this is not too close to the back of the skull, not too close to the nose. I'm thinking of it in 3D. And that's because when I was first drawing these things, I was just drawing them from pictures, something I'd seen before, but now I've had enough successes that it all comes together for me in my imagination. Yeah, people are uh, are noticing your ability to do foreshortening, they're referring to it as. Uh, oh, very good. That's know. a good term. I always forget that that one's out there. That's a good way to describe it. You know, I just call it all perspective. <laughs> it is foreshortening. That's right. Thank you for saying that. And so uh, that's that's what I was describing when when I was saying that if this tail is 20 times as far as this nose, I got to make sure I don't make this a big old tail because if the rest of my picture, as I add in color and shadows, if the rest of it tells the same story, I can get these things to look really big and distant. And so I just have to, you know, right now it's all just black. So we've got the four shortenings, you know, doing, doing the, the story of it, of the creature size, but we don't have the rest, the rest of the things that have power to tell the same story. And so I'll show you those things as we go. I'm liking this sketch. I, I feel like I'm ready to start adding color. So as I work with these, it's probably good to mention if we can just get a quick shot down at the uh, tubes of paint here. As I, as I use these tubes of paint, I just reached down. This is kind of a unique thing. And that's why I thought it'd be worth showing you. I just reach in the tube. And I just dip right into it like this. Watch a little push and see it kind of it kind of bubbles out like that. Go ahead and just zoom in a little for us. I'm going to take a minute so you can see because because you might want to try this. It's pretty fun. I'm going to pop the lids off of these tubes and show you. And you can see, look how they're all dirty. But that's OK because it doesn't just stir with the rest of the tube. It just pushes it out. So it's like a dispenser. I always love using these like dispensers. So I just grab the color that I want. And so I'll start with some black and we push. Look how it bubbles out like that. Can you see that, Ben? Can you see oh, it? yeah, we yeah. got bubbling. <laughs> and then I just dunk, I just scoop it. It goes back in when I let go. Look at that. Okay, so then that's the best here. little system. Look at that. That's all I got to do. And, and it's so like I just think button. it's fun. Now you yeah. push on the paint button and boop, there's a little button. <laughs> it's right there. Now I'm going to do it with yellow. I'm going to go like this. 
And we're going to go push and like that, you know. Oh, whoop, it's sucked in a little bit. <laughs> Just like that. You know, there's something kind of profane about this. Joe. I got to be honest. All right, we'll stop. We'll stop. Okay. Oh, man. I, I love it. You know, I love working this way. Okay, so I'm up here putting the highlights on, on my upward facing spots. I thought it was cool. The closed mouth look I thought was pretty fun. On yeah. My, on my, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, spend some time over on that other camera, shall we? We got a, a real good look at the back of your head here, Joe. Oh, oh, my bad. My bad. You know what? I'm, <laughs> I'm a, thanks for telling me, but just keep telling me every single time I do it, just say scoot left. Just scoot yeah, left. Boy, on that note, you know, we got a lot of people in the room today who've been with you for quite some time and they're reminiscing about back in the day when you weren't even aware of what was going on in no, the screen. No, I'm trying to do it myself. Room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's why trying it's... to use telepathy to get you to to come yes. over and see what. <laughs> I was so embarrassed, so, you know. I a lot of people been with us for a long time through a lot of growing pains, and we really appreciate uh, yeah. their uh, being patient with us and um, yeah through the ups and the downs. You know, you guys mean a lot to us. Yeah, Ben is a, a lifesaver in that way. He's been able to to definitely check the the quality of the, the stream, you know, make sure people are seeing what they need to see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm just going along the high spot. You know, we've got the, we've got the lower jaw and I'm using yellow, yellow and black make a fantastic green. I love it. I love the, the real earthy feel of that green. And then watch this. I just grab some white after I get that color on there. And then where I have that yellow, I can just, just hit it with some white. And we're going to make this look kind of scaly, just, just a very impressionistic approach by just little dabs. We're just touching the brush. The brush I use is real similar to what I would use to paint a house. You know, look at the shape of it. If you look at that shape, it's got the angled tip. It's flat one way. It's, it's just like the big contractor brush you cut in a uh, uh, window trim with or something. And that was just my, my personal preference because I was so used to painting houses when I started painting murals. It was my comfort zone. And so I have developed all my techniques with this kind of brush. And that is not to say that this is the brush that needs to be used. I actually look forward to seeing what other artists do with the knowledge and different, different tools. You know, I just have fun with the tools I'm familiar with the fun is what's important to me. You know, uh, Mary is uh, saying that she just bought a Jeff Easley painting of a red dragon. And uh, she's liking your dragons a bit uh, more, I think. Really? So, All right. Cool. <laughs> nice comment. So, you know, not to knock, not to knock the other artist's work, but she's, she's, no, no. she's liking right, what she got you. here. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a nice compliment. Okay, I'm gonna put some highlight right here. Now I want this jaw to really stick out. This big jaw muscle, one of my favorite parts of a powerful predator is the muscle that you see on this jaw. You know, when I was a kid, I would draw and draw dragons. And that was how, I, like I said earlier, that was how I learned to draw. And so I, uh, I went through phases, you know, for a while I wanted to draw nothing but sharks, for a while I wanted to draw nothing but horses, and I was learning parts, that's what was going on, and I was mesmerized by how much I loved the shapes that I saw on all the parts. So so now, in, in my older age, you know, I almost called myself old, and I thought, you know, Joe, that's not polite to people that are older than you are. And so I was, <laughs> my older age, <laughs> I've realized that I am a lover of shapes. That that's it. I'm I remember them because they mean something to me. They they look awesome and they stick with me. I'm gonna put a grayer color right here. See that? See how I'm just hitting white over the black to get that gray? And then I'm just doing these lines and really scrunching those lines together will help me to get that foreshortening that that you mentioned. So I'm really making sure that I don't have any big shapes. They're all really squished together because I want the look of a big neck going way back. The reason I'm making it more gray is because surfaces are more reflective as they 
as they turn parallel to your line of vision. But when they are uh, adjacent, I think is the word, uh, you know, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, 90 degrees to your line of vision, like you're looking straight down into a pool of water, that's when you don't see reflection, and or, or that's when you see the least, rather. So what I'm doing is just using one element that we'll, we'll see commonly in perspective, that is when surfaces turn, you know, turn uh, sideways, turn parallel to my vision like this. See that grayish color where I added that white to the dark colors? That grayish color adds the slight glare of a surface that is going back instead of flat. And then the fine shapes in harmony with that. So more than one thing telling the same story again. So look how this, look how this tells the same story. I have the shape and I have the colors telling the same story. We're gonna put a little more black in here. So I'm gonna be working with a lot of black, yellow and white to build out the same shape I just drew, but with color. So now I'm gonna go back to the head and we'll do the nose right in here. We'll put some green on top of it. I wanna get color, but not so much. Not so much there. Well, that's what that noise is. I heard all this rustle, rustle and I keep looking back at Brian. It's been going crazy responding to everybody on the key. Oh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm typing away, man. We are Dang typing it. up. So all what's right. going on is everybody out there in the room is talking about what uh, originally brought them into the Mural Joe world. What, oh, what sort of video did they All right. Well, don't see. let me stop. Yeah, I, was, that's rap, fine. You know? <laughs> I thought I was like making a noise. I was like, what is bumps? Why are you getting bumped? No, that's, that's tap, tap, tap of the keys, man. <laughs> all right. All right. Good. Yeah, okay. That was, was, what do you call that, amateur hour when that happens? Sometimes the best thing is just to be transparent about it, huh? <laughs> so well, I'm just know, putting this A in. train wreck can be fun to watch, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have not purposely staged any of those yet. I'm just putting little shapes across the top. You know, this is the top of the nose, and I chose to make the nose have an arched shape because I like the powerful look that it has, you know, kind of arch in the top of the nose. Very T-Rex-ish at the moment, you know, the posture. It's not like, no, no idea is completely unique. If it was, we wouldn't even care about it because it would make no sense at all. And so, you know, I'm, I'm borrowing different different shapes and postures that I think look cool from animals I've seen. This chest, for instance, that's like a horse chest right here. I made it, you know, go down real square, powerful for, you know, animals that stand on all fours all day long. They'll have a big muscly chest like that. Okay, now I'm going to put nose hole in there. Watch, just one little swipe like this. Just go like that and then, yeah, I like that nose. And then I'm going to take some yellow and it's going to mix right with this black and we'll just bring it right back up in there this way to put just a bit of a kind of a of a highlight so that it looks like a more three-dimensional nose hole and we can even take a little bit of the white and put it in there just like like this and then take a little bit of the white put it in here like that there now the nose kind of opens up opens up to the rest of the face like that. Maybe a little more light. I'm going to put a little more yellow. I really want to be able to see those shadows. All the parts, they work together to give a feeling, to give an emotion. So, you know, to me, it's always worth fine tuning. If, if I feel like I have some method to the guessing, I don't like to just completely guess my way through anything. I hate guessing. Uh, but you know, here I, there's a method to the madness because I'm I'm using things I've seen before, like I said, and there's a certain feeling I want to get out of this face, out of the expression. So, so messing with all these little shapes is the attempt to get that right where you want it. You know, Joe, there's a, a conversation happening over here in your classroom about um, the 
positive effect that your videos have had on people's lives in a very meaningful way in some of the darkest times of their lives. Really? There are so many people out there who have been encouraged through bouts of depression um, and struggles of their own just because of uh, what you're offering them. What do you think is it about painting and about your approach to it and observing the world that is so good for people's brains because it seems to have such a positive impact. Wow, thank you. I just have to say thank you so much for the compliment. I don't feel qualified to say why my material is well, so you good, feel you, know. you feel the the release and the joy, right, and the happiness. I do, yeah. Do so I can't talk what? about why why I love it. You know, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're getting at. Yeah, you know, uh, for for me, there's such joy in the process of creating freely and and letting yourself go into your imagination and see. You know, when you, when you see your imagination come to life, then it feels like it matters. It feels like it exists. And I think art is art, meaning any anything we do trying to bring our imagination to life, right? So, in, you know, I, I don't like when things are taken out of context. So when I say art, anything we do to bring our imagination to life, uh, I get a sense of, of mattering out of it. And, and actually, at the moments that I was disturbed as a child, you know, let's say I had a bad day at school. Uh, let's say that I was just struggling with, with who I was and, and, you know, the big questions of life, things that bothered me. Uh, drawing pictures, what, for me, was how I made myself feel like it amounted to something. You know, I think art makes us feel like we matter when when we're able to be in that moment and and so just the the creative process is an important thing that can get lost in all the busyness of life so maybe maybe i'm only guessing maybe it just feels good to have a unique moment where the process of bringing imagination to life is in real time, just just happening, and that's all it's about. It's not trying to, it's not trying to impress someone with the end result. It's the joy of saying, "Oh, now I feel like a tree." Look, let's put a tree right there, just like Bob Ross. You know, that's my best guess, my best guess at it. And I think that uh, the joy of painting was one of the best titles for showing. Sure. <laughs> you know, I I wish I would have thought of that so that I could call my own show. Joy of pain. But, uh, he deserves it more than I do. Yeah, Bob, that sneaky devil, man, swooped right in on that name before you were even born and took it. Yeah, he got, but he also paved the way for this kind of thing, you know. I admired so much that um, those were my favorite kind of shows growing up, uh, shows where an artist would, would be uh, talking as they created and he was one, and there was one uh, bookworm show on, maybe also on PBS, I don't know, we'd, we'd watch it in school. There was a guy that would do uh, chalk drawings, and he would tell a story while he was doing those drawings, and I just loved that so much. Okay, let's go like this. Yeah, I don't like speaking for everybody saying we were made to be artists. We were made to be creative because we I don't know what it's like to be anybody else. Uh, but I know that it's pretty special for me. You know, it's, it's really helped me a lot. Just just getting lost in in the creative process it, itself instead of any end goal brought me a lot of joy. All right, let's go. Well, we got a lot of joy in this room here. Where are you guys all coming from? We want to hear what parts of uh, this sphere we call planet Earth you guys are tuning in from. That's oh, yeah, always fun cool. for us to hear. Yeah, Give us a shout out in the text. Let us know where you're at. Nice. Good call. Yeah, I always love hearing that. And uh, let me remind you all that, you know, something I always forget, I've, I've been told about it over and over, Joe, you got to tell people to subscribe. So if you think of it, I mean, not if you think of it, if you like the content and you think it's worth subscribing to, then just don't forget. I'm just here to say don't forget because sometimes we can forget.
to hit that subscribe button and it really helps me out with getting this getting this scene youtube kicks me just a little bit of money and i really i really like that little extra money that they give me when people watch my videos <laughs> not gonna pretend helps, like him, helps him pay for his uh you know super expensive co-host here yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> All oh, right. Yeah, I'm not the only one. You know, we've said this before. You look at one person uh, doing a good job at something, then there's a lot of other people behind the scenes making it go. All right, we're going to put some teeth just coming both directions, just up and down. I got a good look at some gators on this trip to Florida. I hope my buddy Vince is out there watching because we are going to make that video, buddy. We're going to make it. I, I did a trip to Florida. He took me out to see some gators. Would you believe they're just right on the side of the road there? I couldn't even believe it. Man, Maybe that's what's inspired this here gator looking green, dude. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say it didn't because I just thought, you know, they're just the coolest looking creatures. Crocodiles, too. We went to a, we went to a farm where they had crocodiles as well as gators. Oh, look at that tooth. That was a happy accident right there. I had a little black in my brush and it just put an edge on that. Like, we're going to do that again. Yeah, we're going to do another one of those. We need that. And we want to we want to reach out and say hi to you guys in Texas, Sweden, Washington, nice. Montreal, hey, uh, British right. Columbia, Vancouver, Turkey, Atlanta, Missouri, Ooh, Victoria, uh, Australia, there. Spokane, like, that was so cool. Yeah, Welcome thanks a lot everybody. for tuning in. Yeah, yeah, I second that. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. You know, I got a good look. I carved out of drywall mud, out of fast-setting mud, a gorilla skull for my son Joseph for his new python tank. You know, he, he has a pet ball python, and so he wanted a, a cool-looking decoration in there. I was like, well, Joseph, I don't feel like doing a human skull. That's a little bit, a little bit on the mm, dark side for me. And so I said, but I think it'd be cool to do a gorilla skull. I'll do that. So I did a gorilla skull, and I learned so much by making that skull. So I'm actually using some of the things I noticed here, like the placement of the teeth. You know that that the uh, lower teeth on canines that have this, they they uh, overlap in front of the upper teeth. And that was a pattern I just hadn't really noticed before. Not that you have to follow it, but it's just kind of fun to see how if you use those natural patterns, it can add a lot of believability to your picture. And so, you know, it's it's a fun thing for me able, for me, <laughs> for me able, for me to be able to, like I said, just think of something and bring it to life right away with that little bit of understanding of the pattern that I saw. I'm just pushing away at those little tubes of paint, you know, just pumping them like little dispensers. Dude, hit it like the, the what is it? Uh, what's that game where you smack the little gophers in the head when they pop up? <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> you know, I don't you know, know the one though, right? That's you got so your hammer, funny. You, so funny. You come up, whack, you know, just get yeah. your brush and whoop, take the head right off of that thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's pretty funny. That hey, is we got, the, we got we got Germany and Brazil in the house now too. We see hey, you guys sweet, out there. Sweet, sweet. All right, cool. Yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. We're painting the monster, making the monster, and so this is this is you know about the fun of bringing imagination to life and just having fun making a monster for sure. But but I also have been talking about tricks to getting a large object on a small canvas. So what I'm doing right now is adding the light and shadow, but then adding gray where any surface bends more away from my, away from, well, along my line of vision. So the side of the neck, the, you know, underside of the neck, a lot more gray in there in order to make it go back instead of just looking flat. And then the other trick that I'm going to be using here is adding atmosphere. So the entire object I'm going to make more gray 
as it gets into the distance. Now, that's not something you always see in a photo. You, you can't always see a visible change in atmosphere. Not always. From, let's say, uh, point blank to 100 feet away. Sometimes they just look the same on a clear day. But in a painting, it's just something we can use, you know. So I'm not overly obsessed with what would happen. It's more like what is going to help me make my picture the way I envision it. I'm not as you know. Epitome, Epitome Hawk is out there wondering. Uh, do you do dinos all the time? Like no. this is something you seem pretty good at. Is this? Uh, yeah, thank you. Just you pulled thank it you. out of your hat, or yeah, thanks a lot for the compliment. I. What's, I, what's the history of you and, and dinos? Well, it's like it's like I said at the beginning of the show. You know, I, I I drew these things nonstop when I was a kid, and I never lost my love for it. So you know, when I'm not making a, it, it wasn't what people were trying to see when I was. I wasn't known for that when I was first making YouTube videos. So you, you didn't see a lot of it, and I wasn't getting hired to paint murals of dragons or, or large animals. I was getting hired to paint landscape pictures. So all my time was taken up. And so a lot of you have just never seen, seen that kind of work from me. But the reason I'm telling you that is, is to say, I spent tons of time doing it as a child, nonstop, and just uh, loving the different shapes and the parts I would see. And when I'm not doing it on a video, I would just do it for myself, just doodling on paper. And so there is a lot of experience that that goes into throwing these shapes together. Like this, you know, I'm bringing this ridge down in the middle of the throat because I want it to look like there's kind of an Adam's apple right there, you know, bring it down. And then I've got the jaw ridge. I've 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 looked many times at every every side of the creatures I can find out there. In order to be able to to paint these things more lifelike and and just try to see where my imagination can take it from there, so let's go over here and make a you know I used to draw this kind of stuff in church. That was a great place to draw pictures, since there wasn't anything else very interesting for a eight year old <laughs> happening when a sermon would be going on too long. For my attention span, I'd, I'd be there drawing pictures, you know, just being creative. I think a lot of the time that's when I drew my best because I was just I was just all in. That's just all that mattered was. You know, I can attest pictures. to that uh, because when Joe was a kid, man, he would just draw this stuff all the time. People look over his shoulder like, what is going on with this dude? Yeah, yeah. This and coincidentally, uh, Joe, I think I got your mom here. Yeah, yeah, she's here. Our mom is on the line right now. She's over at Ben's house. You know, Ben's streaming from, from his place. Yeah. And Ryan, why don't you cut over here to why don't you cut over here to Mural Joe headquarters so we can get Joe's mom to say hi. Yeah, as you can just say hello. Yeah, listen to my mom's voice. How nice it is. Just listen. To <laughs> yeah, mom. So uh, is it true that Joe <laughs> drew things all over everything in church as a child? Yes, of course it is. <laughs> Do you have any recollections of particular uh, um, creations? Yeah. Actually, what, what did people think about uh, Joe drawing all of these crazy things? Well, uh, as a mom, they used to advise me to make him stop because there was something wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, they were right. I think they were right. There's clearly something yeah. wrong with Joe. <laughs> but but I, I knew they were wrong because... Um, I'm, I'm crazy about my kids and I'm proud yeah. of all of them. And his, his drawing was part of who he was. And, it, uh, it still is. It yeah. still is. I it do. Is. I, I will tell one story um, while he's drawing this dinosaur. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, go yeah, back yeah, and watch yeah. the dinosaur while we hear the story. Yeah. People are going to like uh, that. Yeah. When uh, he was three years old, frequently I would give the kids uh, things to draw with at the table when it was too nasty outside to play. And he was uh, just drawing scribbles. Somebody early in the chat said something about nonsense to total sense. And all of a sudden, I recognized something in his scribbles. It was totally recognizable as a little turtle. <laughs> and That's right. Since I've, I've given him that turtle. And so maybe he'll show it to you sometime. Oh, I've got when it. I've got it to show. I believe I did. Yes. No, thank you, yes. Mom. Because I, I, I did actually <laughs> one time show that. Well, everybody in the classroom, mom is excited to see the mother of mural Joe. We got a 
a lot of love over here oh. for you. So yeah. thanks yeah. for yeah. thanks for helping embarrass Joe here today. Yeah. No, I'm not I'm embarrassed. Like, not embarrassed. No. <laughs> I'm proud of my mom too. Just like I'm proud of my brothers. Like I said earlier, you know, uh, you see if you see a person doing something well, so much of the time there's all of these people behind the scenes that have made them that that are making it happen. You know. That's my mom. She always, she always was like that. She was always like that. Always just so proud, expressing that, telling us we were the greatest. She was the most encouraging mom ever. She made me think that I was somebody. She made sure. So you know, I've had, I've been surrounded by the people that made me. That's it. So here I'm just, you know, putting in these. Little highlights, getting some light on the top, like this. Putting some right on the top of this so that we can see. You ever do uh, pencil, Joe? Baltazar is wondering. Oh, yeah, you ever yeah, do pencil? sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, sometimes my videos just kind of get lost in YouTube algorithms. You, you, can, you can find a lot of pencil videos on my channel. You know, <clears throat> this, is, this is why I know that... Uh, there's there's some improvement to be made in how we are releasing videos because I put out videos and then uh, and I love that I'm a, I appreciate you asking that question. But then I'm like, how do they not know? <laughs> I put out videos. <laughs> Those videos just get buried, you know. But well, you must have said something to YouTube one day because they just like to bury some of your stuff, man. I know. Yeah, maybe. Well. So, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, hey, you know, we got to, there's no harm in, in uh, reminding everybody that we got these things out there. Yeah, there's uh, live pencil drawing videos just like this. But uh, Ben has really increased the quality of our of our painting videos here. So if you go back and watch hey, my I'll drawing take the video, compliment. Thank you yeah, so much. I'm just warning you, don't expect the same quality. You know, you'll see those moments that people are laughing at me for, or my head's in front of the camera, I'm doing something, you know, doing something, forgetting that the camera needs to point at the work. But anyway, you'll see me drawing. So what do you think? Has, who, out, who out there thinks we should do more drawing? I'm, I'm honestly curious. I'm not, I'm not trying to prompt a response, uh, but I would love to hear what the interest level is for drawing. This feels kind of like drawing right here. To me, I feel like I'm just drawing with paint. Joe, did you take lessons, art lessons? Mary C's wondering. Uh, well, no, no official lessons, uh, but my my interest level was just so high for artwork. There were art teachers. I wonder if Miss McLamara is still out there. Do you think? I wonder. You know, there were there's these magical people that that uh, are never going to capitalize on what you become, but they just give their time and their energy to helping you become it. And so I have these art teachers that just gave time to just nurturing the things I wanted to do. They helped me to develop it. And so I don't remember specific lessons that showed me how to draw this or that. I, I found that on my own. And I think the same goes for anybody that sometimes all you need is just the passion and the time and you'll find your own way to do things. But the people that give you the confidence and, and the assurance that you keep doing this because it's worth it. This, this, you, you're, you're great at what you're doing and it matters, you should keep doing it. You need that assurance all the time, especially if you're like a sensitive artist kid that looks funny. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, I think I think most kids feel they look funny at, at a certain age. You know, it's <laughs> I was certainly a super duper awkward. I look back at photos of myself at those yeah. ages and I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, imagine me and my mullet. I just, you know, it just kills me when I see that. My mom tried to tell me she was a good mom. She said, she said, how about I just cut it off right now? And I had a rat tail, you know. Remember rat tails? Remember when that was a thing? Oh, dude, so, yeah. you were the mulleteer of mullets. I had a rat tail extending beyond the mullet itself. I had two hairstyles in one. It was the worst thing ever. 
Finally, my yeah, mom secretly know, cut there it out. Was a, there was a phase Joe went through where he wanted to do dreadlocks, and uh, he was having trouble getting his hair to stay in dreadlocks. And so his creative brain was like, hey, maybe if I melt some crayon wax into yeah. my dreadlocks, yeah. they'll yeah. stay. It did. Stay put. And it so, did. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's gross. You know, what are you <laughs> going to do when your son shows up with uh, crayon wax melted into his hair intentionally? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I was I was like any other any other artist that likes to experiment with crazy hairstyles. You know, it was fun. It was fun for that well, season of life. Here you weren't alone. Joe Wings and Things is out there saying uh, that they did that to their kid. Melt no, some crayons too. So oh, you they know, did that to their it. kid. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, you know, like an experiment. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. That's really good. We like experiments here. So I want to point out, you know, on the on the note of this painting, I want to point out how gray I made this tail. So now I'm using not only the effect of reflection, but the effect of atmosphere. Just really taking the color intensity down to something, you know, like a, a so any kind of haze in the atmosphere would cause a graying effect of the colors. And so we don't need to get overly scientific with exactly what color. You know, blue atmosphere might make it a little on the purple side. If it's smoke, it might be a little more brownish. But, you know, you make the colors grayer and you'll get that distance. So here on the back foot, I'm going to add all this black and white in there like this. So Squamish Shell out there in Canada is wondering, do you ever use oval or fan brushes? You use a lot of uh, oh, you know, I did use an oval brunch, brunch, brush once that I can remember, and that was to make some bird feathers. It was really handy for quickly putting together some parrot feathers, I believe. I needed lots of feathers. I needed a brush. You know, I'm always looking for a tool that can do it with a touch, with a swipe. I don't want to mess with something uh, that's going to, uh, you know, make, make make me spend more than one brush stroke on an object I have to do a million times. So here I'm just doing little dabs just to get the look of scales on this arm. Little bits like that. There, see, just little dabs. That's all we need. And then we've got this more scaly look. Okay. Now we're gonna go in here, try to finish out these limbs. We're gonna put the the gray in there so that this is a distant leg, not a close one. And, you know, one thing I also like to point out is look how messy I can be and still get uh, a good look. This really reminds me, anybody a uh, Calvin and Hobbes fan? You know, I really loved the uh, artwork in those comics. And so I feel like this is along those lines with, with the, you know, it's a real loose and fun stuff fun style. I'm not sweating the details, but I'm getting the depth. I'm getting the three-dimensional look. And so imagination fills in the blanks, you know, and, and I just think that that is a super fun thing in a picture when you're able to just do a messy job, but imagination is filling in the blanks about what things must be because enough of the picture makes sense. So here I just do a few little dabs of the white coming out here, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's the arm coming forward. You know, you, you fill in the blanks. You don't really need to see the detail of how the scales overlap in order to, to get what this picture's worth. You know, it's just the fun of seeing the, seeing the position, the creation of the, of the creature here. And go here. Let's see. I need to do the underside of this arm. Maybe we'll... Yeah, I kind of like that shape. Like I said, I love lines, and I just, you know, had a feeling I would like that swooping out to make the arm kind of bent right there. Then we'll add yellow to get the green color. Well, yeah. that's a fast motorcycle. Oh, huh? man, you can hear everything going on out there. Huh? We got to, you know, we got to cool things down here. I might have a, well, that wasn't even an open window, but uh, we uh, our AC went out in this building. It's a little bit oh, yeah, we'd love to hear what kind of name ideas you got for our monster friend here. If anybody's got any, shoot them out here Ooh, in the text. Yeah. Okay. Sweet P, perhaps, we've got yeah. from uh, oh, well, Mary. I thought we were talking C. like, what is this name of the 
what what is the kind of animal like maybe we're going to invent an animal you know like this is a oh yeah that too this, this is a moss dragon or whatever <laughs> whatever <Moss dragon. laughs> yeah well i had to think of something not great to give other people a chance yeah well you know? the, we got we got some feelings out here that the head is enormous so maybe the the size of this big old head is something to do with this yeah species. okay that's that's good now you know, there there is something to be said about the size that you make something. So the size you view this picture at will influence uh, a good thing that came up in a previous video we did was it was is there a certain certain perspective, a certain distance you should look at a picture from? And my opinion on that, well, whatever distance the artist intended. But if you think about the amount of your vision that something is is taking up that changes with distance you know so think about something you're looking at from a great distance every every single part of the body of this i'm going to be looking at from the same angle if it's far away but then if it comes close up i have to turn my head left to see this side i have to turn my head right to see this so we get we get these really changing angles on it so when i make this really blown out perspective like i'm right up on this head well, this is going to feel much better to look at big. This is the kind of picture I would want to put on a large wall that's going to take up. And it's not about the size, not the actual size. It's about the percentage of your field of view, how much you can see all at the same time. So if you're looking at this on a little computer and in your peripheral, you're seeing a whole bunch of other things, then this is, this is going to look very fish-eyed. But then if you blew this up on a, on a really big screen, it would uh, likely be a different effect. It would start to look more appropriate. So the intent here is to get really blown out perspective, really have this so that it looks like this goes way back. And I do that by painting it as though it's huge and then using these tricks of just reflection and atmosphere to get this. I'm just trying to put enough light and shadow on the fingers. Joe, did you feel like a weird kid, you know, because you were an artist? We, you know, Jalesia and um, Leanne and a couple of others felt weird, you know, yeah. when they were younger <laughs> because of their artistic inclination. Is that yeah, something yeah. that you can um, identify yeah. with? Yeah, I can identify with that for sure. I, I would even go so far as to say there was a certain point when I knew I was a weird kid. Uh, because, I mean, weird in the sense of just being unusual. And there is a point when I just had to own it and realize that I was unusual. And so there is a time, you know, I'm not too extreme on my thoughts. There, you know, I'm not of the mindset that, that I should just be who I am to, uh, to any extreme. And it's right just because it's who I am. I don't think that's true. There are times when I feel like doing bad things. But I do think that there's a moment when you can just own what comes naturally and, and you can say with security, this is what I feel like, instead of being ashamed of the kind of thoughts that come into your mind, you know, the more you just own it, the more you're able to become what you want to become instead of just burying it all the time. And I, I guess there was a point, maybe that's thanks to some very encouraging parents, maybe thanks to the uh, very encouraging um, family, friends on many sides that I've had. Or I was like, well, this is just who I am. You know, this, is, this is just what I do. You know, I'm here to be different. I guess, I guess the world doesn't need another of what it's already got. <laughs> just decided to own it. So we got Algisaurus. We got uh, Sweet Pea, the Algosaurus. That's clever. That's pretty. Like that. That's yeah. pretty clever. That's a good one. Yeah. So I'm gonna do something at the end that I'm hoping. I'm hoping. We'll we'll see if I do a good job, but I'm hoping that it will have a good effect on the on the perspective of this thing so that it doesn't look as much like it's just a huge head but it looks like it's a huge everything but the perspective of it is that the head is very close and i have the feeling that if we just get the right context in here so i'm going to put some trees in in a minute we're going to get that just like 
just like I've done before. Right, hey, so Baltazar, Baltazar has got an interesting question. Okay, uh, they that? started mixing uh, their palette on canvas and finding it harder to do with acrylic versus oil. Is that something that uh, you've got any experience with or thoughts on the mixing on the uh, canvas versus the palette with acrylic? Yeah, versus yeah. Oil? Well, with acrylics, you no, know, you're on time crunch. It's drying. It's drying fast. And you know, so you you've got to you've got to hurry up and get to the color you need. And so, there was one workshop I did where we started with we did real big brushes, we did things big, and then went small. And the people that attended that, they gave a lot of good feedback on them. they they said that that was a good good exercise because that is the answer is building up familiarity. Uh, the bottom line is you got to speed up, and that's not very fun. Uh, that's not a very fun answer to that problem, but it's the only <laughs> the only answer that I found. You just got to get faster at mixing those colors, and so you need a good method. So familiarity has been my best friend with with this method. Is just knowing what I'm going to do before I do it, so that I can get right to the color that I need, and then the uh, then the fast dry time is fun because it's not standing in the way of what I'm trying to create. It dries and then I can just come back just like this tail I'm doing right now. I can, I can come back to this and put, put new colors on it and not worry about the colors beneath mixing with it. So I actually enjoy the real fast dry time. But when you're first working with that, it can be a real headache for sure. So just stick it out, keep up the practice, and it does get better. You know, you get faster. You know, Kate, Kate uh, received a diagnosis when she was 28 um, about herself that really added clarity to who she was as a person and, um, you know, was able to accept it at that point. Do you think that uh, there's a level of acceptance of ourselves as, as being individuals and, and uh, our uniqueness in the world? Is that something that you've had to do? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah been at peace with your your way your individual yeah way. well you know i don't want to i don't want to talk too much like i'm you know i don't want to talk like i'm plato or something you know like i've got got existence figured out uh so that that's that's an awesome experience that kate has had i think that's really yeah. cool you know security with with whatever whatever you are that i think I think there was a, a point in life where I no longer felt the need to be labeled. I was trying to fit into something that existed before when I was younger. And that was because, you know, it's, it's a default success. It's, it's like, oh, you're going to have success if you just run with this crowd, be this thing. Everybody will understand what you're doing and it won't be weird and you won't be embarrassed. And so, you know, then when you find yourself hungry, to be what you were made to be, uh, you know, you should, I think you experience some emptiness in that. And so there was a point when, when I just became very secure with whatever came out. And for me, it's been Jesus. You know, Jesus to me is the ultimate example of how to live a live a. a a joy-filled life, the ultimate example of creative, the ultimate example of humorous, you know, just enjoying life and then letting it go, just letting go because you don't need to control it. You don't need to control things. And so finding my identity there, I'm not important because I'm an artist. I always felt like that's what made me important is if I painted a picture well enough, that's what made me important. You know, after all, that's what everyone's been complimenting me for all my life is how good of an artist I am. Well, what I needed to learn was a lot of the time they were giving me compliments because I needed them, not because they liked the drawing. That was the grace of the people around me <laughs> because, because I was worth something. And so for me to come to a point in life where I was like, God made me, he likes me because he made me, because I'm his creation. He doesn't like me because I drew a good enough picture but i literally felt like that you know so my value simply comes from something that is not touchable 
by the rest of the world. And so I don't have the insecurity anymore. It's just, it's okay if I live, it's okay if I die, it's okay if I never get famous, it's okay if I do. It just doesn't matter because everything's gonna be all right. Okay, so here's- Hey, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna give you a break from the real big questions here. Let's talk about red and yellow. Okay, talk about red, red and yellow. Red, yeah, red and yellow. Tomas in uh, Brazil is uh, having trouble getting red and yellow to cover well. You got any thoughts on getting red and yellow to cover? Mm. Well, for me, yeah. And so we don't all work with the same kind of paint. I I just work really heavy. You know, this this method of, of always having a mix, all these colors are going to mix so much better. So uh, getting red and yellow to cover, the short answer is a gray that is of similar but similar darkness. You know, you just get a gray that is equal in brightness to the red or to the yellow, and it'll cover that a lot better than other colors. And gray typically covers very well. So you can get a gray uh, with one coat, and then your second coat is the color you like, and then that's actually easier some of, a lot of the time than going straight to your color and doing multiple coats with that. So where you might have five coats, we used to paint houses, you know, and we would have to get, you know, someone wants a red accent wall, we'd have to get it to cover. So doing a gray uh, would cover really well because gray has a pigment that is very opaque. And then we would put the red on top of it and may maybe we'd end up doing two coats to be thorough, but that was better than five coats of the red all by itself. But, you know, the pigments that make red and yellow are not known to cover well. And so it is just a common struggle to just have to do multiple coats, keep working with it until it finally covers. That is a normal thing to experience. Okay. So where does this dude know. live? Where's this uh, this uh, Algosaurus live? What kind I of know, environment? I, are I need to get there? to that part. I got way more detail than I planned. I want to see this. I feel like I lost some of the distance on the neck here when I bent it down because we want to see these shapes going way back like this. I want to see lots of little shapes. See the distance that puts on the neck? I want to see that distance. There, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a forest. Here, I'm going to make this. Ooh, a forest, right? Yeah, a green environment for a yeah, green creature. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Creature. Exactly. We're going to put some colors All on right. here to, to get this. And I'm going to be a perfectionist for a few more seconds. All right, there yeah. we go. Okay. Is, this, is this an amphibious creature here, it, Mary? It looks like it could be. Up, right? Yeah, it looks like it could be, doesn't it? All right, let's see yeah. what we can do. Let's put, so this is where I think it'll be fun. Let's, let's add some context to this, you know, let's put a tree going up like so. And I'm gonna tilt the trees like this so that it looks like, you know, maybe I'll use a slightly bigger brush so I can so I can get more paint on there. We'll do gray so that we don't have this tree right up in the front. It's gonna tilt. And if I do a few of these trees tilting like this, then I should be able to get some, some good upward perspective. So we're gonna put branches going up like this. We'll do some smaller ones with the smaller brush. Right now we'll just kinda put some of the larger ones in place like this, put a tree there. Let's put another one back in here like this. More white on the more distant tree. Again, you can look at that angle. Let's put some here. Let's put some there. This thing is just, just walking through the, walking through the forest here. Now look at these angles. Isn't this fun? Look when I tilt these. All of a sudden, we've got this upward perspective on something we're familiar with. We've got a tree. You know, we've all seen trees. We know that they're not. We know they're not tiny. So when your imagination finally says that's a tree, well then you've got a size comparison. And so now we can have have a little better size reference, make this thing look bigger. So we can go like this and put branches coming down here. Let's see if we can do a few little scribbles in here for branches. You know, a trick with tree branches 
if you can just keep your brush, this, this is hard, you know, keeping your brush at the same distance from the canvas is, is a big challenge, but it's worth practicing because if you can do that, then all you do is you just come in with something bigger and cut across the ugly spots. You can get lots of texture real quick. You know, you just scribble in the little stuff. So you go like this. And let's get some black and white here. We'll just we'll just mix it on one of these trees. Just get black, put some white in here, like this. And then we'll just do scribbles here. Let's get more of the white. And just scribble these in like this. Just little shapes. I gotta use more water. Not the easiest thing I ever did. I actually imagined this being easier as I was talking, so so I'm eating my words a little bit. Talking like I was just gonna throw some scribbles in. Yeah, let's rest, let's rest the hand a little bit, see if we can get some. I want tiny shapes because that's what makes the other things feel bigger is when you've got the existence of tiny things in there. It'd be fun to put like a little, you know, a little bird in the tree. There you go. <laughs> That's a bird. <laughs> yeah, let's put a, put a few little feathers on the bird. Choop, 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 like this. Like this, put another. Another little wing coming down right there. There we go, we got a bird. Then we'll go in here, let's go like this. Maybe we'll add some foliage in here. So let's do, let's do some, you know what would be fun? Let's do some kind of fallish colors. We got plenty, we got plenty of green in there. Let's, let's set it off with some fall colors just because, just because it'll be cool to see the colors you know, contrasting with each other. And then I'll put some pure white where I have those bright colors. Pure white. Let's grab some of that. Put it in there right where I have that brightest yellow. And then hey, I'll how many wallflowers do we got out there in the world? We want to we want to hear from you guys out there. We see. Oh, yeah. We see you uh, hiding. Say hi. Where are you from in that chat? OK. Anybody that's just now tuning in, that's my brother Ben making sure that I don't ignore the chat. You know, it's too hard for me to paint and look at the computer screen. Tried it. I tried it. I was terrible at it. And so we're making sure that we keep an eye out there. So we got more than one person monitoring the quality here. That's right. Fed up. Fed up with you is in Ontario. Good to hear from you. All right. New Zealand. Nice. Cool. Man, all these places that I would love to visit. Well, look, yeah, I did all those uh, scribbles, and then I realized, hey, I want to put a background on here. So let's just do it. Let's just. We got it. some Arizona in the house today too, Michael in Arizona. Hey, all right, cool. Netherlands. Nice. We got people from all over. That's fun. Got lots of gray in my brush, so I had to put it over there. I want my brightest colors right in here, like we're looking up, seeing the light pop through the trees right here. I did all those branches, then I changed my mind. This is not a technique I recommend. The technique of, oh, I gotta plug in my computer. The battery's gonna die. Will you do me a quick favor, Brian, and get my, uh, it's plugged in on the wall over there. Here, sorry, but, sorry about this. <laughs> we gotta make sure the video hey. doesn't completely shut down. <laughs> you know, this is funny. We were having a conversation yeah. earlier about uh, when uh, you were, doing a live stream and some paint thinner got knocked over in the middle of the stream and we yeah. were scrambling yeah. to get it's the like, paint no, thinner cleaned no, up. All right, it's the joys of live television, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry for the glitch there. I had forgotten to plug my computer in. And so we got it in the nick of time. Do we still got everybody online here? Oh, yeah, man. We're oh, okay, cruising. Okay. We can go ahead and flip this thing. All right. That would have been... That would have been bad. Good, you been know, sad. it's a good time for a coffee break. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, how long have you been painting? Fed up wants to know how long you've been painting. How many years? Yeah, well, um, I started painting seriously for a job. You know, I, I don't feel like 
I should include my high school years in that. You know, I'd paint for art class projects, and I don't feel like I should include that. So let's say that I've been painting uh, since about 2005, where you know I I started I started in in 2000. I I uh, got on a paint crew and was just learning how to sling a brush and, and paint walls white, just repainting buildings. Got familiar with contracting painting at that time. And so uh, there was a point, you know, about, about 2005, so something close to there, I decided, you know what? I, I don't want to just do this all my life. I've got talent as an artist. I want to try doing that. And so I switched to that at that time. And so uh, from then until now, was that about 15, 16 years, something like that, uh, that I've been really painting seriously for a muralist career. So I get commissioned now to go and paint murals. I'm working on one right now locally at the juvenile court here in Flagstaff. That's fun, trying to put a peaceful scene in front of people that don't have a lot of peaceful thoughts. And, you know, it's, it's a super fun job. Super fun job being a being an artist. You get to go to all different job sites, doing lots of different things. You get to do something that people are hiring you because you can do something that they can't, and it sort of makes you feel important. <laughs> it makes me feel important. If we're being honest, that's funny. I did it's all those fun. branches. It's funny to hear about uh, people out there painting while you paint. We got Michael Lee out there uh, oh, getting sweet. rid of some paint too, as they. Hey, paint. sweet. All right, man. That's cool. Yeah. I'm just putting colors in here right now. You know, if you're painting along, I, I might as well talk about, you know, what I'm doing here. Just trying to add some darker colors in front of my lighter colors to get the perspective of being beneath these trees. So everywhere I don't have my darker colors, I'll be putting in lighter ones between, you know, I'm going to just make light popping through. And, you know, it's an effect you can do by just shifting all the colors more toward yellow as they get brighter. So then you get the look of light coming through something instead of bouncing off something. So just make sure as you brighten up these light areas of a canopy that you that you put lots of yellow. Just put it in there. It's a quick way to get the look of some foliage, you know, of, of, or uh, I should say the look of a canopy. I'm going to get pure white. Just throw it in these brighter areas. Look at that big, heavy load of white sky popping through that's all i need is white beautiful day to go wandering through the forest for this dragon for this monster maybe it's not dragon maybe it's some other maybe there's another name for this one yeah there's uh, uh some pretty complex ideas here for the name of this thing i had to get a pronunciation guide for this <laughs> one from kate she's, yeah she's she's gone with coolasukas <laughs> Whoa, cool. Whoa, are we like cool as Are we pulling out some uh, Greek or Latin to get this thing named? Are we getting technical? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. all right. That's we're, cool. we're, we're getting global. Let's pull in some Latin. Yeah, Let's pull yeah. In yeah. Some, uh, Good scientific. German influence. Some, yeah. Uh, all right. Sweet. So, what I'm going to do is I go further down. You know, I want to make sure I strategically put color, something you can't do with the photo, but you can do with the painting is make sure wherever you have images overlapping that you can see edges so we can really, you know, just put light where I have a dark edge, put dark where I have a light edge, just for the sake of really seeing my creature. So we put some white in here. How much time we got left, Ben? I want to... And hey, we've been at it for about an hour and 14 right now. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So we got about, we got about 12 minutes left. Got about 12 minutes left, and then we'll call it. And so just a reminder for anybody, you know, that is coming in, coming in a little bit later, uh, would love it if you would give us the honor of subscribing to the channel. And I'll promise never to put up content that I think is bad. <laughs> How's that for a promise? <laughs> I promise not to suck. <laughs> yeah, man, come on, quality. We promise to give the highest quality. It is important to me. I know that it's just a broken record. Everybody's promising many things. But but my goal is always to put content that somebody out there is going to find helpful. That's what I want to do. 
I'm just loading on the white now, you know, just getting lots of light behind these objects. We want to see lots of light popping through the trees. And really, I'd say the more obscure, the better. You know, I, I'm being messy, but once I try to get once I try to get perfect details on this, I'm in trouble because then it starts to look like there should be other things there where if it looks like it's meant to be interpreted by imagination, then it's it, it stays more fun. You know, it stays an impressionistic piece. Imagination fills in the blanks. And so, you know, that's the, that's the look I'm going for. I just feel like it might be cool to have kind of a fiery background. In this what if we did what if we did have kind of a orangey background let's put yellow and magenta so I'm just working with yellow and magenta on this look how bright it is I don't even need red to get this in in comparison with the other picture with not pictures the other objects that are in this picture that is a very bright color and so I don't even need to use a red that's a that's kind of a, a guard, a guide I put up for myself when I use magenta instead of red for primary mixing to ensure that I don't go too bright on any of my oranges. I'll do it when I'm, when I want pictures, I used the word organic earlier, you know, when I just don't want any super bright shade of orange in there. I'll do that a lot. I'll just use magenta uh, when I'm doing a portrait, if I'm doing a person. I use magenta to mix all of the orange tones and skin to do lights and shadows because that will make sure that I always have room to put brighter highlights and that I don't go too unnaturally intense with my more orange colors. So do we think this uh, this creature here is maybe being misunderstood and is really a nice individual? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can say that. We can say maybe, that sure. uh, After all, he's not doing anything mean. Yeah, Kate's thinking maybe we could just grab a ball and toss it, play a little fetch. That'd be fun. That'd be cool. I think that's a good idea. Maybe uh, Leanne thinks Sweet Pea is lonely, looking for some friends out yeah. there in the woods. <laughs> He's looking. <laughs> it is kind of the posture of a dog that wants to play. Look at that. I, I put it at the beginning. I was like, oh, let's do a posture. Like, it's a yeah, I was like, throw that ball. Yeah, throw yeah, that yeah, ball. yeah. yeah, yeah. He's crouched <laughs> down. He's ready to go get it. It is kind of like that, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to just... Hey, Michael, that's great to hear. Well, uh, Joe, Michael Lee's saying that uh, they've been painting windows and murals since 1992. But Whoa, in addition sweet. to your entertaining skills, you're teaching them how to participate in the world more. Wow, so man. Thank, thank you. you twice. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. That's awesome. Wow. Those are uh, things that I treasure. You know, I, I, I get high off of thank yous. They're just the best thing to hear ever. You know, I, I, I won't hide that it really makes me have a sense of purpose. <laughs> it really does give me that. It really does feel that way. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is redo my branches. Redo the branches that I left out. I meant, I meant to have lots of branches going across, but then I was like, no, let's do, let's do some color in the background. Okay, we're going to put a tree. Tree just got bigger. All right, and then we're gonna pull a branch right up in here. Just pure black is what I'm using. We'll go up here like this. All right, and then we'll take that light color in my brush and just right down the edge, grab some of that background color and just put it right in there. Okay, well, let's get right on the edge there. And right here, let's put some mm -hmm. here. Muriel's thinking that forest looks like it's on fire. All right, cool. Yeah, he might be misunderstood. Then again, he might have just torched the forest. Who knows? Who knows? It's up to the viewer. We'll let the viewer decide. It is fun to just put bright, bright colors in just for the sake of seeing the color. You know, I just love it. All right. And to keep those trees from sometimes black turns cut. Well, black turns green when you mix it with yellow. You can see it all over that magenta. Make sure that doesn't happen. So distant trees may mix with my yellow background. I'm using gray, so I just added magenta. And then I'll get this nice color for distant trees here. And the magenta keeps it from turning green and looking like something other than tree trunks. 
That's all it is, just a little bit of that magenta color. So this is something you've talked about previously a bit, but uh, you can touch on it uh, quickly. Do you typically work from foreground to background or? Uh, oh, um, I do it both ways. Yeah. And so hmm, that's a good, you know, I, I, I have a different answer every time I answer a question that can be frustrating for people. So let me make sure I give a right answer. You know, it depends on my goal. I do it both ways. That's for sure. When I'm wanting to be very efficient with time, then I will do the important parts of a foreground first. I'll bring the background up to the edges. And then my last stage will be something like this. I'll, I'll give you an example. It'll be something like this where I say, okay, I did the foreground. I brought the background to it because I don't want to waste time doing a background that just gets painted over. And so I like to be efficient with the time if I have a plan, you know, and on this one, I did have a plan. So then the last thing is just to redo the edge because that's not so time consuming to just come across here and just put the top of this nose in place, clean it up a little bit so that we've got a nice, you know, a nice, nice crisp edge on our monster. Okay, I'm gonna put black. I wanna make his eye a little bit more downward looking. Like is it ever easier, Juliet's curious, is it ever easier to do the background first? There we go. Yes. I would say yes. You know, it's just, you know, uh, as I as I get more familiar with painting, get more confident, I just choose to do the foreground first because I think, yeah, I can save some time if I just do block out this foreground and then don't waste time with background that I'm not going to keep. But it is easier. It is easier to just gradually work. And there's no nothing wrong with it, you know. If that's where your comfort zone is, do it that way. You know, I don't have the superior method of painting. It's just my comfort zone. And just trying to get things done quick because, you know, I, I love seeing it. I love seeing it come together. And I know that there are people watching. <laughs> so we don't want to spend forever on something. I'm going to just throw in a few more little little things. I feel like this needs some some crooked tree. We can't just have them all the exact same way. So let's kind of put a few a few different ones in here as well. Here, let's go like this. Like this. Branches going this way. Just a few. You know, we've got them all kind of going the same way in there. And then I'll put so some scribbles. A, here's a science -y question for you. Oh, yeah. What's uh, that? I like JCMD. Question. Is talking about blue shift. Don't so, even know uh, it. Right? That's what I was saying. Yeah, blue you'll have shift? to tell me what blue uh, shift is. I'll make a fool of I'm over here on Google looking it up. The displacement of the spectrum to shorter wavelengths in the light coming from distant celestial objects moving toward the observer. That is a mouth full. Whoa. Like, are you trying to, like, dissect physics in this way while Ooh. you're painting? No. Like, what no, I'm not. You know, all my science talk are things that immediately translate to understanding the picture I'm making. Give me a technique. I want, I want understanding that will deliver a technique, a pattern that I can reproduce in order to get a look. I, I'm not, I'm not actually just trying to, I mean, I do want to understand the universe and all that, but, but my main goal is, Hey, I want to understand how it's working so I can use it to create, but I will tell you something, you know, about, about the mention of that blue shift. Here's a fun experiment that you can do to see that the amount of blue does change with nothing other than distance. And so you can pick a sign on the road that has blue and red, okay, two, two different parts of the spectrum. And you have to find something where they look very similar in value. Or you can go to a computer screen, make a red square and a blue square that are equal in brightness. Okay, so that right there can be a challenge. But if you can do it and you want to do the experiment, try it, because I've done it. And I embarrassed my brother James in the middle of Best Buy saying, James, look at this, look at this. What is I showing him my iPad screen so that he can verify that at a distance, the blue becomes darker. So if they're the same when they're point blank, the blue becomes darker at great distance than the red. So there seems to be, uh, there seems to be, a what would you call it as if the waves are dispersing dissipating as they travel a distance 
where the red goes further. And we, and we do hear from scientists, we do hear that red travels further. So it seems that you can actually observe that. I, I just thought that was pretty fun. I could do an experiment with my own stuff because I was curious about it one day. Took my, took my iPad, did a piece of art that showed that very thing. Not lying. I wouldn't lie. <laughs> well, we got a lot of creative ideas coming in here as we uh, around the corner toward uh, home base. We've been at it for about an hour and 25, and uh, we got ideas Time like smoke out the nostrils. We got like oh. maybe... That'd be Standing cool. in yeah. grass, or uh, you know, like we got lots of stuff. Lots of ideas. Here. Yeah, let's put little spikies all Love the way down. Really put them. Yeah. Okay. So what should we do? Well, well, what should we do with just a little bit of time? What is the best thing to do? I'm not sure about that. You know what I really wanted to do? This makes no sense to throw this in at the last minute. Uh oh! I thought it'd be cool if we had like a little kid looking up at it, just for uh -oh. size, size context or something. You know, I thought that'd be fun. I wonder if we could pull it off. We could try. There's no harm in trying. You know, what if we did it? Let's just put two legs. Let's just give it a shot. Okay, two legs, like this. Okay, body, right here. It's a little kid body, so we got to make sure we do things. Do things in a believable proportion, about that size of a head, you know, put put shoulder coming out. And then arms that are a little bit surprised. So they're going to go out to the side like that. And then we'll put two little feetsies on there. Yeah, and we'll put this, you know, maybe a little more symmetrical so it's like it's really looking up. Okay, then we then we just need enough color on here that we put a bright outline on it. That's all we need. We just need a few colors. Let's put some green grass. Here, let's just throw some yellow on here. Throw a little bit of magenta. We're gonna have grass. We're gonna have dirt. We're gonna have a lot of stuff. Throw some white on there. Here, let's just do this. We need lots of color. Just put it on the canvas. We gotta hurry up and put a bow on this picture. So we're gonna go like this and put. Just the texture of some kind of ground in here, some horizontal lines, some up and down strokes going different ways. As long as we got some color going side to side, you know, we get the perspective of ground this way. We get that color doing that, like the, the ground going back. Good perspective like that. And then let's go like this, cut it in right right down here you know show the little legs of this kid looking up and you know there was this one time i learned and uh no never mind i was going to tell a story then i realized nope that's going to embarrass a customer someone's going to hey, good catch yep. uh, good not, we're not catch. Gonna say way to keep that foot yep. out of that mouth yeah yep, yep. so skill. i will just say generically <laughs> that there are there are uh certain relationships doing to either children or adults. And, you know, you end up with very strange looking people when you mix those relationships. So if I did a child and I forgot that a child's head is much bigger in comparison to their body than an adult, well, I'm going to have a, a very unusual looking child, you know, and so it pays off to be aware of those things, of, of those those relationships. So I real quick just, you know, whipped out something that I thought would be a believable scale for the, the head size to the body size and here. And then we'll cut this in. Let's, and I still probably have kind of a giant, giant head there. Let's see if we can shrink it down just a little bit like this. Yeah. Epitome Hawks thinking maybe we got a kid here playing fetch with the, with Dino. Yep, that's it, maybe. And, you know, I feel like the looser I go with the details, the better. It leaves things to the imagination, and whatever I don't put in gets imagined, whereas, you know, I've said this a million times, so maybe I'm maybe I'm over overstating it, but, you know, you put in details, you make sure that people see them. Sometimes you're forcing people to see something they don't need to see. Okay, I'm going to put 
a mix of yellow, white, and magenta right around here, just to try to get the look of the top of a head, like that. There we go, top of a head. We'll bring it down like this, like that. Then we'll do the top of some shoulders right here. here let's do the top of the shoulders. What do you want to do? We'll do a red shirt. We'll do a red shirt. Put a little bit of white on it. Let's grab some of this white and go like this. Just a little bit, just enough to feel like, hey, yeah, this is really a, this is really a person right here. I'll put a touch of that yellow just so that it looks like a red and not a pink. You know, put a little bit of light, maybe like a t-shirt right here. Let's go darker. Let's put the darker color right on the back of it because there's not as much light there. Then we'll put the black back in place where there's less light hitting our object. Put a little bit of that so you just kind of see the back and the sleeves of a shirt going down like this. Put an arm, we'll fill in the head a little bit so it's not just a ring. You know, put some, let's put some orange in there. Put a little bit of red and yellow here. Red, this is how we get color on the hair. We'll just move it toward yellow as we move it out toward the brighter spots, just like anything else. Put some yellow on top of that head. There we go. Oh, very, very impressionistic approach right here. And then let's put some, let's put some normal skin color on the arm right there like that there we go we're gonna put put a highlight on the arm right there you can actually see an arm there now let's take a little bit of our brown color some red some yellow or magenta and yellow really Just do another arm right there there you can just kind of imagine the rest you know here let's take a Let's take a little splash of that, put a hand. Let's do, do our magenta and yellow and just put a little chunk to put the bottom side of a hand. Just like that, that's all we need, just a little bit of a shadow. Put this in here, like this. I feel like we need a little more color in the shirt. I'm using straight magenta there because it's a nice dark color. We could do a touch of well, we don't have blue. We didn't use any blue in this color, so we'll have to settle for gray. Gray functions as my blue. So black and white right here. This will be little wrinkles in the pants like this. There we go. Then we'll put the black back in place. It's kind of fun. It's kind of dreamy, yourself. you know? Yeah, it's kind yeah. Of dreamy. The feel like of a, imagination, yeah. A recollection of a dream I had, you know, like if I was sitting in a therapist's office and he was like, so tell me, about, if, if you could paint a picture of your dream last night, what would yeah. it look like? Yeah, I was looking up I, at this dragon. Yeah, you know, it's got that, that lack of detail yeah. like a, the memory of a dream has. You yeah, know, some yeah. Oh, oh, I just threw my brush. There was this huge lizard thing and we were painting fetch, but the forest was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, good. That's cool. Yeah, it does. And and so I feel like the it's actually the absence of these. It's not very often that I that I go this route. So it was fun that it happened. It happened uh, this time, you know. Not very often that I just try to do the whole picture in a more impressionistic vibe. So fun, fun. Do you uh, watch this? Will sell for more than any picture I've ever painted. <laughs> do you uh tomas is wondering uh, about your color workflow do you typically work um dark toward light like toward dark yeah i'd like, say uh, is there any i'd say more often i do it both ways just like i do foreground to background both ways but i would say most often i'm working dark to light because uh it's easier i think like most people it's easier for me to imagine light coming out of darkness than darkness being plugged into the light, you know? You could go either way with it. And it, it often just depends on how I'm, how I'm visualizing the picture, you know? So it's not always one way, but yeah, probably bringing the light out of, out of the dark areas is the funnest way, you know? So I can see it kind of come to life.
I do things that give my imagination something to run with. I don't always have a picture uh, that I'm happy with, and I and I need to see something that I want to run with. So I'll, I'll do things that give me uh, give me shapes that I like, something that gives me ideas. You know, I have techniques that I've chosen specifically like this, these leaves. You know, this is a technique with my brush that doesn't paint a single leaf but generates shapes that that look similar enough that when I do see something I like, that's the spot that I'll jump on with some details, take it even further. And, you know, I just let the rest be more impressionistic that way. So um, does that color workflow apply to oil as well? Oh, as well? yeah, I would do it the same way for sure same way but with oil i'm just very cautious of any amount of dark so when i start with dark with oil i i just start with really small amounts of it just because it's so hard to get white to cover a dark oil painting and it stays wet for so long those of you who work with oil you know you know the painstaking process of trying to get your white to be a highlight on a dark picture you're like oh i just keep putting piles of white on this and it's it's not looking like a highlight you know it's just a hard thing with oil all right this is starting to you know you've got uh, speaking of shapes a lot of people are, are thinking when you put the trees in there it really came to life and the little kid that you know added even more it's really just yeah, like okay cool and i'm thinking you know you've got you this is something you talk about a lot where you have multiple things pointing towards the same story yeah, so you yeah, got yeah. Your, you got your uh, the underside of the jaw that you're looking at on our creature. Yeah. You got the trees all kind of bending toward each other at the top and kind yeah, of coming out right. at the bottom, you know. Yeah. And you got your little, little person down here. You know, all these things are saying you are looking up. Yep, yeah, that's it. You got it. You hit the nail on the head. That's That's the goal here is to use these tricks to paint a big thing on a small canvas. We want to make a big monster, but we've only got this small canvas to do it. How are we going to do it? So we started with foreshortening, but it didn't end there. That wasn't all that it took. You know, if it was just the foreshortening, we have just kind of a funny looking huge headed creature. And maybe we still do. You know, I'm just, I'm just making my best use of all the tools that are available this we uh we lost our birds finishing touches everybody finishing touch, you got we need any, that bird still in here we're gonna uh, comments questions we'd love to hear about it uh joe's putting the the little things here and there and uh we're running out of time so uh say hi that's it we're just gonna put the last little birdie that i painted out in the beginning i don't know if it was here or a little bit over but we're just gonna put it right in here there we go. Who knows if it's landing or flying away. I just thought it was fun to have something in there. You know, we'll take some yellow, make these leaves a little smaller here. Let's put little dabs like this. Get rid of the, the really giant shape so they look like bigger trees. A little dab will yeah. do ya. That's it's it. Been said. Dab will do ya. <laughs> it's been said. Yep, there we go. Okay. There's our monster scene. I feel like we need one. We need one tree that's maybe closer than the rest. Let's make it this one. This is just a compositional preference here. You know, I I, I just want something. I want this tree to come down further than the rest to be closer. This will be the last thing. I'll just bring this right down to here. You know, you are inspiring a lot of people to paint. That's that's the takeaway here. Is uh, hey, all right. Hey, cool. Artisan and Henny and Jalesia. You know, nice. we got a lot of people in here that just want to grab a paintbrush and go now after experiencing this. All right, cool. You know, that's what that's what the uh, role models of my life did to me as well. I always valued that kind of thing. There's nothing like quality time in life, you know. And so I appreciate that. It's a very nice compliment. I had I had people sit down and just draw pictures with me and it inspired me to make pictures myself when I was younger, when I was developing my ability. And, you know, Ben, you remember very well, Terry Tool out there sitting down doing cool crafts with us. 
you know? <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. I was always learning. He and our dad, they'd sit down together and have a good old time. Just being creative. Yeah, you know, we grew up we grew up in an environment that celebrated curiosity and creativity. We're very fortunate. You know, we're blessed. Watch this fun little trick. I keep saying this is the last thing, and then I think, oh, one, one more thing. Watch, you can make light coming through trees, just little diagonal swoops like that. That's all you need. Here, let's get some white. We'll get some bright magenta and yellow. This is just the same color I've been working with. See this distant tree? Just put little stripes going down. You can put these little dots of bright, peachy, orangey color you know, for some colored light right here. Watch. Just put some light com coming through that canopy and hitting these trees like that. I want to see the tooth a little bit more too. There we go. There we go. All right, all right. We could just keep going and going with this. We do got to call it. Yeah, we got about an pictures. hour and 40 minutes logged here of awesome lizard forest on fire fetch time with <laughs> Mural yeah, Joe. It's time you know? to quit. I never want to quit. Okay, one more thing. One last thing for real, for real. Just one last thing. Yeah, for real. We got to We got to put <laughs> – that was not a cool thing. No, for say. real. For real. For, for real. real. <laughs> oh, man. People don't even say that anymore. I'm a little behind the times. Okay. All right. We're going to put a shadow. We're going to put a shadow on this ground with just some black and white. Nothing fancy. Just putting horizontal lines. Let me get some more white because it's a bit dark. Whoa, that's a lot of white. We're just going to put shadow on the ground under this beast. Yeah, Mary's got a fun idea here. She's saying that um, you can do a painting where you're looking up at the scene, but the scene is painted from the perspective of looking down at the subject. That sounds like a pretty tricky oh, POV. Oh, I like that idea. I like that a lot. I like that. Very good. I've never done that. I think that's what I really like about it. So we're talking about something I've never done. Got some original thinkers out there. Yeah, very cool. All right, look, even the shadow of the head. If I get things just right, then this might actually this might actually successfully look like the shadow of this thing's head coming right over here by the boy and do another do another favor for me on the perspective. You know, bring that head right up to where the boy is by putting that shadow right up where the boy is. Like this, get multiple things telling that same story. Yep. Yeah, buddy. Marco says, turned out awesome as always. Thanks so much for sharing your time with us. Ian says, what an awesome monster. Uh, Juliet loves right. it. It's brilliant. Wings and Things says, and uh, Baltazar has been painting 30 years, and Joe gives motivation to keep painting. Hey, all right. 300 paintings. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up right there. We got our we got our pieces in place. It's time to time to call it. It's done. Okay. Well, so when are you doing this again, Joe? Um, uh, you know what I forgot to show you all uh, is what we are going to be doing next week. So I've been teaching lessons for those who are members, and so we'll be doing more live streams. But for now. Next week, we're going to go to muraljo.com. And if you'd like to join in, this is, you know, kind of like a workshop. I'm going to be teaching a lesson, smaller crowd of people, uh, and I'll be giving you colors in advance to follow along with the painting. This is intended to be a walkthrough and to, to give you a lot more information. We'll be doing this from my website. So you can go to muraljo.com right now and see uh, how you can sign up to be a member and get a lot more of these real-time tutorials. So I'm going to show you right now on my screen what we have. Uh, give me one second here to pull it up. I'm going to show you right now what we've got for... Uh, let's see here. Let's minimize this guy. I'm trying to multitask. We'll get it here. Uh, 
what I've got is a picture of a mural that I've been working on. And so this is what we're going to be painting. So let me grab this picture real quick. Click that. We're going to go over to camera four. We're going to close out Ben here. We'll get this. There we go. We got Ben on the side. We're just going to leave Ben. He's a handsome guy. <laughs> close it I'm out. just checking out lizards yeah, in the forest, thought, man. We're just I'm... Gonna close out. <laughs> yeah, maybe get rid of it. Maybe get rid of it. Yeah. Okay, this picture you're looking at right now is what I want to show the paying members how to paint. Very technical, but it's going to be really fun. We'll work with a limited color palette in order to get the look of wet rocks and water moving over those rocks in a believable motion. And so if you like the look of that and you want to know in detail how we uh, can put colors together to get that look, I want to show you. We had a lot of fun doing the monster today so in a similar way but i won't just be racing through it i'll be really teaching as i go answering questions and so i would love for you to go and sign up to be a member if you'd like to join and you can always just subscribe to do one course and then cancel when there's nothing else you want to paint so i set it up that way on purpose to let you opt in and out at your leisure okay ben are we uh forgetting anything else that we need to shoot out there yeah, we forgot to say, everybody out there, thank you so much for giving us your time and uh, making this happen. You know, you guys are the reason we do this and uh, the reason we keep doing it. So, um, again, everybody, uh, Ben's not in the studio with me anymore, so I'm operating things myself. And so I'm over here juggling things like, oh, we got to. Oh, yeah, man, we're, we're clicking buttons. <laughs> we're saying goodbye. And I'm like, oh, what do I got to do to end the stream? Anyway. Thanks a lot. We're going to kill it now. And I look forward to seeing you on the next live stream. Sign up on the email oh, list, and I'll give you a notification when that's going to happen. Ooh, that really looks good uh, on the first time I've seen it on the computer screen. Looks good.